Hello, Billy the Artist here, back with another how to draw video, and today we are going to be doing V from BTS. It's going to be good fun. Uh, we're going to be drawing Kim Tae Hung, I think that's how you pronounce his surname. But we have already done Young Kook and RM. But before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when new how to draw videos appear. And do share these like crazy. You can use the hashtag on Instagram. Uh, again, my social media info is in the banner. Uh, Drawing with Billy, use that. And uh, people are tagging me in Instagram and all kinds of stuff. But do share all the videos out. Uh, I did put a vlog up recently about it. Just, you know, I really appreciate the support and sharing the videos. And it's just great. The more you share, the more my channel grows, the more I can actually do. It's that simple. So thank you very, very much. These fellas are in the How to Draw Portraits playlist. Do check that out, link in the cards and in the description. Those two are already up. We have also done, musicians wise, we have done Ariana Grande and KSI. And these are really good. You know, people are loving doing the Ariana Grande. This was amazing. And, and it was just great because even in this one, I did mean to use a brush for the shading on that. Uh, drawing of John Cook's portrait, but with RM I did use a brush, and I show you how using a simple soft paintbrush uh, you can use it for shading, and you literally use it like makeup. And again, that's just an art technique. Makeup, the makeup tutorial folks on here are amazing. We also have from Trolls Queen Barb. Now again, there's another absolute mega rock chick musician. So again, I do use the techniques in these that I use in all of my how to draw videos. I want to make drawing. I want to demystify drawing, make it as easy as possible and encourage you all with your work. So again, check out the how to draw anything. There's loads of cartoon characters, uh, The Simpsons, Toy Story, Secret Life of Pets. There's Olaf and there's lots, lots more. There's over 130 videos so far in the how to draw general playlist. But then, of course, we do have good old Harry. So in the Harry Potter playlist, there's loads of videos now. And I keep I will be adding more and more because there's lots of characters, lots of creatures, things like the castle. But again, Harry uh, right now. So this is July. We are in the second week of July 2020. Harry's had over 330,000 views. It's been amazing to see people of all ages drawing Harry and people are enjoying the recent one. Uh, Ginny in year one with Tom Riddle's diary. That's the most recent Harry Potter video. And I've done Luna, Hagrid. Again, you can see in that multi thing, so many of them, Ballatrix, then there's Dumbledore and everybody else. But do, again, like and subscribe and share the videos. So anyway, let's just gently move these folks across and now off to the left I have Young Cook and RM staring at me. I will try and get V's name right all the time, I promise. Unlike I did with RM because Young Cook was just off camera staring at me, it was a bit of a pain because I kept saying his name, not RM. Anyway, this piece of paper, check out the link in the cards right now and in the description. And that is for How To Draw Anything Part 1. And this is the absolute basics before we get into this grid. Now, the Olaf video, that's in the description, that uses this grid system. But the basics is just using simple shapes. And I say in there, you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a flea, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else. Again, simple shapes. Now, that video, it's been amazing. It's, it's just helped so many people it's had over 77,000 views now which is a joy to me and again just share that out it'll be fantastic when that hits a million ah that will be beautiful if that happened in the next week I would be laughing a lot that would be fantastic but they are the basics and I want to help you grow those skills now this piece of paper is A4 paper before we go any further it will appear in the banner the dimensions and everything check out the link now this is how there's a live video. It's about 26 minutes long and it shows me laying down the grids that I use for my how to draw video. So you see this actually being laid down in real time. And again, it's A4 paper. So now in the banner is the uh, dimensions that you need for this 
particular piece of paper and this grid system that I use. Now I don't start right up in the corner. A4 is, for the grids, A4 is 21 centimetres, 210 millimetres by 29.7 centimetres, 297 millimetres. And I mark these out in millimetres across. So you need a metric, a, metric ruler, a metric ruler to mark them in. But I just like the centre line, which is why we've got this five millimetre border just around the two sides and the top. Again, it won't go all the way down. I just like the centre line. It's, it's easy to talk you guys through and it just kind of doesn't look hard being shunted off. That's why I do it this way. But this grid makes it very, very simple to then put down the shapes. And I use the shapes on top of this grid. You can go straight in with the line. I use the shapes because it helps you to place everything on the page. Then you can do your detail line. I draw these lines much darker and the construction of the face much darker than you have to do it. Because then I've got to really rub out to get rid of the construction lines. But... If you do them lighter, it's easier to erase them. And, and that's another thing. People say, you know, I have had a few, it's not many, but I've had a few comments where people have gone, oh, it's cheating using grids. Really? Old masters use them. Were they cheating? No. People who do portraiture with sitting subjects totally from life, stunning, amazing techniques. I've done it. I've actually gone, not even with somebody sitting still, I've gone into live music events where people are playing instruments and moving and drawn them and drawn their portraits. That's a skill that will take time to acquire. I love demystifying drawing and making it as easy as possible to help you guys with your drawing. So now, we will crack on with drawing V. Here's the trusty 2B pencil. And we are going to get in and start drawing V. Now, on the centre line, right on the 105, coming down between the 105 and the 125, we have V's left eye. So, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, and you can kind of see how far across it comes towards the 85. And kind of two-thirds... Mm, yeah, about two thirds over to the 125. And then it's just kind of below half. Now, if we come over, I've actually just scratched the pencil on the paper right where his nose is. Oh, brand new rubber. My old one, I actually, uh, I think I threw it in the bin by accident with some other stuff. Couldn't find it for days. So I had to get a new one, <laughs> which is why... <laughs> In some of the videos, I've used this much smaller one, which I borrowed from the good lady wife. Check out her channel, youtube.com forward slash Sharon Bill, if you want to learn music theory and you are a beginner. She has over 800 videos and they are amazing. She's helped people do really, really well. Anyway, go and check them out. So now I have got rid of that. So here we can see we have on the 65125, we have these v-shaped nose what we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle and you see how that comes down to the one four five and his nostril here on this side we've just got a d-shape so i'm just going to draw that in quickly and then you can see how we've got that triangle shape that goes up now here we've got an inverted kind of v-shape that's between his eyebrows and we can bring that try. You can see there's a triangle of shadow coming right down into that corner. Now, we've got a V that goes up above into the 65. And that's his hair. So we've got a V shape going up there. Again, we've got more hair going up and we're using the grids to help place the shapes. So here we've got another V shape which is the gap between his hair that comes down over his forehead. So now we've got this really nice big curved D shape and this is the shadow in his eye coming around his nose to the bottom part of his eyebrow and then increase the top part of the D shape and that's the top part of his eyebrow. And within this now, we've got 
right on the lines, the 45 to the 65, you can see V's right eye. Now I'm going to draw just the box. But you can see down at the bottom, we've got this lovely curved shape underneath the box. And that's the fold of his lower eyelid underneath his eye. It's very light here because of the light that's on the left hand side of his face. I've just indicated that. And again, I'm now going to draw over. And his eye is kind of like a paisley shape. And we need to build that up a little bit. And I'm now going to just put in the circle and you can see here we've got a triangle there. So there's the circle and that's just over the center line for his right eye looking off and put another circle in for his pupil. Now on his right, his left eye, we can see where and it's kind of just below. We've got this triangle shape. And you can see how this top line is a little bit higher than this one of his upper eyelid. So we've got this curved shape inside that rectangle. And then here we've got another triangle, which is the white of his eye going out past the 105 line. And then we can just put that curve on. We can then extend the triangle right the way out to the shadow in the corner. And because he's looking right over to the right hand side, we've got a triangle for his tear duct. You've got a lot of white showing on his left eye. Now again, I'm just using very simple shapes. Now we can just bring gently the curve underneath. So now I'm just drawing a triangle on the 65 line, 145. You can just got a little triangle shape, which is his right nostril. And that curve is going to go off. And then the left nostril I'm just drawing a kind of little crescent shape. Very, very small. Now his lips come down. His bottom lip is below the 165 between the 65 and 85. And then coming out past the 85 and above the 165, we've got a triangle. And that triangle goes up to about halfway inside this square here between 65 and 85. Then we've got a V on V's lips. And then we've got a rectangle. It doesn't come over too far. And the center of his lips comes through this cross point of the 65 and 165 line. And there we've got that rectangle shape going down and that's the bottom of those lips going to the edge, the corner of his lip over his bottom lip. And then we want a rectangle line coming over just slightly. It's not perfectly horizontal. And we can indicate that inside the line that's inside his lips. Now, the side of his head, we've got here you can see we've got just to the left of the 45 line his hair coming down and this is the bonus of using shapes you are kind of drawing negatively in a sense because you're not just drawing the outline you're actually drawing the shape of his hair you've got this v this curved v that comes down and that's giving you the top part of his head the side of his head by his eye coming down onto his cheek and then you can see how we've got this curve just this curved c shape that comes down to match where his lips are. Now, as you come down below the 185 line to the 65, 
just about halfway, you can draw that line down and you've got the edge of his face. But here you can see we've got this shadow. So you just draw a long ellipse shape and that's the shadow on his cheek on the side. And then we've got at the top here, there's a triangle of shadow. And then you've got the curve of his upper eyelid into the shadow that goes up to the 105 line. Again, underneath his head, if you look, we've got the curve of the upper eyelid, but you've got a kind of triangle of shadow and shape that goes up to his left eyebrow. Now his left eyebrow is a, just a nice curved shape that comes over and joins in his hair. And then again, we've got his hair that goes up, joins the 85 line, and we've got a V-shape again of the hair inside. Now, on the hair, this is how I'm saying, you're drawing using shapes and you're filling in and it just makes things so much simpler. If you come over to the 165, we've got a long rectangle that comes to the 65, which is this line here that goes up from that V. You can draw that up and this is the highlight and it's below the 45. So we've got a lot of highlight there in the hair and we'll do all of that wiggling. This is where I say I draw this a bit darker so that you can actually see it, but it needs to be light, especially that when you draw the, drawing the highlights in. And that's the highlight on his hair as it comes down. Now on the 165 line here, we can see that there is a D shape that comes out from about halfway and comes down and curves, comes down past the 105, which is just above his eye. So you've got this D shape coming on the edge and then it curves back under the 125 that comes down past his ear. And there you've just got that nice, simple D shape. Now again, his ear that's inside the hairline is another simple D shape. So if we draw, before we draw the D, you can see his hair that comes down from the 165, just above halfway. That then comes down to below the 145, 145 line, and you've got a V that then is going to go up and join here. So just a nice, simple V. And that's his hair. And you've even got that dark. You can see there's a highlight above. So you've got a full triangle there in that D shape. And coming off the bottom, his ear comes up. And there you can see we've got another simple D shape. Inside the 145165 vertical here, this square here, we've got another little P shape. So we can draw a capital P and that is the entrance to his ear canal. If we draw that line outside, follow the curve, just do a like another D shape, you can see how that's the crease in his ear as it comes down, comes around. Now, on about the third line, we just want a couple of vertical lines of his earring that comes down and then we've got the Chanel logo. Now the Chanel logo is super simple. You can see how we've got the edge of it. So I'm going to just draw a box first. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just drawing this box and then inside it, you've got, just so as we've got the di dimensions right, we've got a C and then imagine you've got the front of a B or a reversed C and it just crosses over so that they're mirrored. Now, we're going to draw the edge and, and try and leave the white as much as we can to show. And that 
you just do a C and then a reverse C and that's you've got the Chanel logo nice and easy. You know, you can draw little ellipse inside and that's the dark in the centre. But then you've got his hair that comes down behind it. And here, right at the bottom, I'm going to draw a V first that comes down below the 185 horizontal, goes up to where the edge of his neck is. And then we've got a parallelogram coming down from his ear to join, and that's going to create the shape of his neck. Now again, we're just using simple shapes to get all of this down as much as we possibly can. We've got all of the centre of his face in and most of his head. So now if we come up here, we can see on the 105, there's a little V shape there that you can then turn into an M. And that's the top of that hair there. And then you've got this triangle that comes out. Just do a bit of a curved line. But there you can see there's a triangle shape there. But this hair is going to come down. I'm just indicating some lines of the direction that the hair is going to go. Here we just want a simple curve that comes around and goes up towards the 65 and then it curves over. And here because of this V that you put in you've got the edge of this hair that comes down on the right hand side of his head. And then we just want this nice curve shape it's just like a big leaf you can see you just got this nice big leaf shape but it comes through here halfway between the 25 and the 45 on the 65 horizontal and then you just got this little triangle there and you can join those edges up and that's the shape of his hair that goes off and then obviously you've got this bit that comes out and goes across that cross there that gives you the shape but they are just the wispy bit of hairs that are floating around in the background again the same just a few wispy hairs at the back on there again the same on the top now his chin here we've got you can see we've got coming across to the 125 line we've got this nice slightly curved triangle made with the 185 line so we've got this lovely triangle it's just below curved triangle there and that's the bottom of his chin and here i'm lightly indicating we've just got a c shape and that's going to be the shadow on his chin and that just curves from just underneath the lower lip and then the curve of the C comes underneath the 185. Now I'm putting that on lightly because his skin is very, very light. And I don't want too heavy a dark line to have to obliterate. So now we want the curve of his cheek. It comes down from his ear. So again, this is right on the 145 line. And you can see how there's this inverted V that comes down a little bit and then it's going to curve over and cut across. And that's the shape of his jaw. Now you could just you know really whack in some quick construction lines, but it's just nice taking your time. So now here we've got again a triangle. For this shadow so put the triangle in you've got a little curve for where his adam's apple is inside his neck and the curve of the shape of the neck creating that shadow and then we can just curve it around as it comes past the 65 line now here we just want a little rectangle and that's where the shirt is joined by the buttons now Coming across the 65 line, we want a little V shape there. And then again, we can just curve the collar up. Yeah, you can draw a rectangle if you want and then curve the shape up. On this side, same thing. We can 
bring a diagonal over and then we can draw a rectangle all the way up that comes from the center line up to above the 205 just inside the 145 vertical so I'm just drawing a rectangle quick and then we can just kind of correct the shape a little bit because we've got this curve coming all the way around so by his neck here we just want a little D shape his neck needs to come down a little bit closer you've got a D shape there and then the shirt comes out and curves down now we've got his collar again here we can just draw a little triangle but then we can curve this all the way round and this curve shape comes just above the 265 and you can see how it curves around and comes above the 205 and we've got the edge of his jumper his burgundy jumper and we can follow that curve so here you can see we've got this little triangle on the 245 and the 145 and then here from this edge going right to the edge of the paper you've got a triangle shape there on the 245 going up to join the edge of his collar again just you can see a triangle here going through these squares for his right shoulder now finally we want a little box diagonal line triangle there and a rectangle that's his tie going underneath his shirt I'm just putting a little box to indicate where the little logo is going to go and that's our kind of cubist shape under drawing down for V so far and then we can put the highlight uh, the more detailed line on next right now we're going to start doing the outline and I just need my piece of paper so I don't smudge my drawing lots and we're going to start with RM's left eye now we put these shapes in, we put the rectangle and then we put these triangles in because he's looking to the right and it's just to show you that I don't use exactly the same method all the time this is where you develop your drawing skills because you can do things I mean you could literally start with his ear using this system and you know then come down do his shoulders and and this is why I do this because it shows that there's no formula it's learning techniques to draw so we're going to come in and we've got the point of the tear duct on V's left eye and then we've got this lovely curve the top of the curve of his eye is here just to the left of the center line and then it starts to curve back down and we've got the shape that just nicely curves up so I'm going from the top and just curving down carefully I'm using the 2B pencil like I say just sharpened it so I've got a nice point and then you've got the curve of that triangle right in the corner of where the tear duct is and then you've got this fantastic shape that curves around and under so it drops down to the bottom so there's the top there's the bottom so you want that curve coming round and then it goes up to the corner of his left eye and then we've got the eye the edge of the eyelid with the eyelash and this curves up but it's actually lower and you've got this lovely crease just over the top that comes right to this corner point out here and that curve goes right the way over and joins and then you've got 
this thicker black line underneath which is gonna have and again you, you can kind of i'm just gently indicating where some of those eyelashes are but we'll put those in properly afterwards now you can see we've got the curve of his iris going right from the top to the bottom because he's looking to the, the right <laughs> off the page we've got that curve there now again we can just indicate his pupil I'm just filling this in I'm using the 2B pencil but we're going to use either the 4B or the 8B to get the real dark black afterwards now I've just filled that in quite lightly and you can see there we've got a highlight so I should have left that could have left it uh, but you can just come in with a putty rubber and just indicate that highlight now the reason why I've done this is so you've straight away you've got something that you can lock on to so again we're just bringing that curve underneath and then we've got the hair that kind of comes across, really comes across his eye. And there's even more that are going to go up. And then we've got the eyebrow that's underneath his hair. So here I'm just indicating where the eyebrow is generally. But I'm still drawing, I am actually drawing in the direction that the hairs on his eyebrow will grow. And then we've got this lovely triangle or the sweeping curve comes down and then we've got this kind of highlighted bit of the hair that sweeps and we've got these two little V shapes that then go up and this one goes up and it curves up to the center line the 105 but it goes just above the 65 line So now by the 85, we've got some lines that just come down and follow. And you can see how that then curves across and comes to his eye. And then we've got four lines that come down and one that crosses over. And then we've got this line that comes off. And then you've got this hair, this V shape that we actually put in. I'm going to draw, so from the 125, you can see here we've got a little diagonal angle that comes over and then it curves down where the lower part of the earlobe is. And then we've got these lovely wispy hair bits on the V that is coming up right next to the ear itself. And then coming over the ear, we've got some strands of hair. So I'm going to draw that a little bit dark. And then the top of there's a little bit that goes over the top of the ear. And then that just curves down around. In fact, I just need to rub that out a little bit quickly. Because we've got that dark bit that comes down. And then we've got the dark shadow of the ear. So I'm going to draw the earlobe properly, just curve it over, coming over the 165 line. And then it comes down diagonally. And then comes through just to the left of centre. And then that curves down. We've got the construction lines. You've got a point just above the 145 line where the ear, you've got the line that comes down and then it goes off at a different angle. That comes across right at this corner point here, little dink, and then comes down. Leave, don't go through where the earring is. And then you've got this curve, you've got the bottom part of a C, this curve that comes up to the ear. And inside you've got 
kind of p-shape of the earlobe and this is what I mean when I say you don't have to draw everything in one order so they're already using this system you can see we're actually building up the drawing quite quickly so now we're going to come down and we've got this point on his nose so we've got the shape of his nose the point the center of his like nose as it comes down is right on the 65 vertical and the 125 horizontal and you can see how it just curves there so we've got a shadow that just follow the line that we drew and you've got the curve that comes round and then the top of the nose just curves slightly as it starts to become a C shape so there you've got a kind of D curve and then it becomes the C shape the C shape that comes down to above his nostril and that comes down and then curves around underneath then you've got the edge of the nostril that comes just underneath the 145 line curves out and joins the side of his nose there and then you want the inner part of the nostril and that's the darker part and then we can indicate the left nostril and then we've got this lighter part here I'm not going to increase this very much where his nostril joins the side of his cheek and then we've got this rather interesting shape so coming off the bottom coming down to the V we've got a shadow that comes across comes down and then goes horizontally over and then curves across the top of the lips and then we've got the shadow that comes down caused by the nostril there we want the vertical and the kind of creases in between the center of the top of his mouth where we've got the V of these top lips now I'm going to come up and we're going to do the same that we did with his left eye on his right eye I'm going to start from the tear duct and you can see where the tear duct going over to the right hand side of his eye and we've got the high point that comes up and just a little bit lower and then it curves over to the tear duct that's on the 65 again just slightly down from the left eye so we can follow that dark that goes up and we can come across we've got the little triangle for the tear duct a little bit of skin the flesh that you can see there and then the curve is very pronounced on his right eye more than the left eye and that goes into the shadow right over here so we can bring the curve down of his eyelash and then you've got the inner part of the eyelid right next to the eye right next to the iris take that up to gently lightly take that up to the tear duct and then we've got this brilliant shadow line caused by his upper eyelid now bringing the edge of the iris down now this time I am going to indicate that little highlight there again indicating the pupil we can put the curve of the iris but again it's all in really dark shadow in that corner and so I'm just now 
darkening this down a little bit with the 2B pencil. We can darken this right to the corner. And there we've got V's eyes, both eyes now in place, staring back at us. So now, the side of his head in the shadow on this V, we come down. And it just kind of slightly curves to follow the form of the eye before it then just kicks out to become his cheek on the 125 line here. And then we start this trajectory as it comes around. And we were very careful when we put this in. Now, following the line down, crossing the 45 just above the 165 line, we come down to his cheek, coming down to the front part of his jaw. That crosses over and then comes through the 65 line and curves across. Now, I'm going to go from the side of his jaw to bring it over. Again, I'm using the curve of my hand. Just carefully bringing that over. Now again, that's going to become a lot lighter, but I'm drawing this darker so that you can see it. Then we come across, just carefully making that angle a little bit more steep for the edge of his jaw. And then the shadow comes over and comes round. So now I'm going to come we're going to do his lips. So I'm starting on the 65 vertical down to the 165 and we've got this kind of little pointed C shape coming right into the shadow. So I'm just curving that round a little bit and then his lower lip, it's not horizontal, it's just slightly angled and curved as the angle goes up and then that cuts through the 85 line I just need to bring that up a little bit comes through and then goes to about the halfway point where his lip goes to the corner section right at the edge of his mouth then we've got that fold that comes out. Now we come back, we've got a little U shape that goes up and goes through the 85, but very bowed like a, you know, a, a long curve. I mean, it's, it's only very small on here, but it's not a U like a letter U. It's a long gradual curve. And that curves up, goes through. And then we can follow the shape of his lips, the center line between his lips that comes across. Now, we've got the top of the lips on that V and this curves across very lightly and curves down just to the left of the very corner. And there you've got that shadow that comes around. Now, outer lip curves down comes down and there you've got the shape of his lips and the shadow that's created around it so now I'm just indicating a little bit more the shadow on the side comes up his cheek you've got the line that follows the curve underneath his lower eyelid, a line that follows the upper line eyelid where you've got that highlight and then one higher still that comes through the 105 horizontal and we've got his eyebrow that curves up 
curves across. Now we can bring this hair up that goes over the 65 and then comes up here. Again, I'm twisting the pencil. I don't really need a particularly fine line for the hair, so I won't sharpen the pencil just yet. And then we've got this curve of this hair that comes down right through the cross of the 65 and the 85. Comes across there. Then we've got this curve. The hair comes through then goes up through the 65-65 point and that goes right the way up to join the 85 line. Now the hair that comes to the right side of his head comes down, you see where it curves around And then between the 105 and the 125, we've got these little bits of hair that are sticking out. Now, above here, I'm just indicating these highlighted bits of hair. So here, there's a, you've got a V shape. And that light comes down. And then Above, there's a V shape that goes dark into the top. That's looking quite good already. Now we can bring the hair over following the lines as we come over. So this one comes down to join there. Got it. V shape that comes down. Then we've got these highlighted parts. So just like we did here, I'm just indicating in the direction that the hair grows where, and we put these horizontal lines, the highlight meets the dark. And we just follow that all the way over. So here on the 145 line, we've got a very strong highlight with a dark there that goes up. And the hair joins. And then a highlighted bit that's going to the far left at the back of his head now I'm just curving this hair down following the trajectory that we drew in with the shapes and this comes down past the Chanel logo down to the bit of hair underneath his left ear. Then you've got the shape of his neck that comes down, curves inside the collar. Then you've got the collar that comes down in, inside the jumper. Now again, I'm following these lines carefully and the jumper frames the left hand side of his shirt collar. Comes right the way across and the bottom point is on this 85 line before it starts to go back up. Then that curves up and goes over the top of the collar on the right hand side right the way up to this corner. And we can bring the collar down where you've got the 
edging goes all the way around. Now the shoulder, left shoulder, comes down off the page there. The right shoulder, like I say, is kind of slightly angled, his shoulders. So this comes out, comes down through the 25 line, and then goes below the 225, just inside the 5. So there are our lines guiding us. Now the collar, so we've got his neck that just comes down, comes below the 205, then curves across and comes down to about halfway between the 225 and the 245. Then we've got where the shirt joins. So we've got these kind of little horizontal lines and then yeah, it's about halfway. The shirt collar on the right hand side comes over and then curves down straight through the 65 and 245 point and goes underneath the jumper. And that's where we've got the top part of the knot of his tie. Now we can draw the shape around the tie where it goes off underneath this collar. So again we can now draw in the edge of the collar from this point up to where it joins the shirt. Goes up and then we've got this V that comes up and it actually curves up a bit in this little triangle here between the centre line and the 125. Just the shape of it, it just curves and then you carry on that curve to join up at the top. Then here we've got that angle, we've got a diagonal line that comes over there. I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. So I've got a nice sharp point. And then right in this box down here, yeah, we make that a bit shorter, that comes to the halfway point. We've got the little logo. You've got a kind of foot, and another foot goes off to the front. And then little shape at the back and this is all dark around here now while I've got the sharp point we're going to come up and we're going to do the Chanel logo now we've got the C's I'm just drawing the C inside first and the same for the reversed one And then with the very sharp point, I'm just going to do the outline, tracing around those lines, but leaving a fairly large gap, which will be our white line afterwards. And we can make the, the C and the reverse C thicker to fill out to the edge. So that curves over to where the earring joins, you've got the bobble at the bottom and the vertical going up and a bit behind his ear so we don't do that up. Then the point going over comes down and joins just above the 165 line and we can curve that, follow the curve of this little leaf shape, curve up the C out. Now we can fill in the black much easier and it'll leave the white and that's how we've got the Chanel logo. Now we've got all of these wonderful lines on the collar. <laughs> so these are the things that the grid really helps. And I'm going to start, I'm going to start, in fact, I'm going to start from this side and we're going to go around and up. So it's as if I was right-handed and I'd work from this side going over. Like ordinarily, I'd start from this corner 
and work my way around. So to show you that the grid, you don't have to follow the flow of your hand. You can do it any way you want. I'm going to start from this side. So we're going to come onto the 205 line between the 45 and the 65. And you can see where we've got this lovely curve that comes over and down. So you can see how pretty much on the halfway point. So I'm just going to do a dot to dot. So I put a dot and then a dot here. That's where it's going to join. And then you've got the curve as it just comes over. So that's a fairly dark line. So I've put that on quite dark. Now above it, we've got this kind of mustardy yellow line. And then above that, we've got another dark line and then another dark line that goes up underneath his chin. So I'm going to bring the line of the collar up. And then we've got a dark right in the corner. Kind of about halfway. We've got that second dark. And then we've got the mustard one in between the two. How that comes over to the edge. And then the mustard one's going to come down. And you can see how it cuts through the point where we drew on there. And it comes to the 65225 line. So that comes down. And then comes right to the front. Now we've got the second dark line and that comes up and joins the mustard line and then you can see how it just kind of curves over quite directly and then we come down and we've got the th this next dark line how this curves across comes through on about the quarter and you can see we've got a V there but then this is going to come down to go underneath the collar. Now this one is a little bit wobbly just following the crease of the shape of the collar. So we can draw that line over and then on the 225 line you can see how that kind of flattens out and then goes over. We come down And that goes just above the 245 as it goes underneath. Now, here we've got the line that's going to come up. And we need to come up and join this V. And then it's going to come all the way up to curve on about the third line on the 205. So we go through that point that we put on there. And then it curves and then you've got the one below starts underneath the 245 line and follows the same kind of tra trajectory as the one above. So we follow that line up now this final one we come down and it just goes up right to that corner then we got you can see the bit of the stitching so I'm just indicating the stitching and then you've got above that you've got the mustard line so that comes up and then curves over comes down through where the stitching is goes down through the 245 line and then in between these two we've got this mustard line that curves over and that's how you join in all of those lines and make it work together. So now we're going to do the same on the left hand collar. So we've got the dark line that comes down, comes through the center and goes to the edge. Then from the center point on the collar, you see how this is going to come across and hit just above the 245 line. And it follows the same trajectory as the one at the front. Then the one next to it. And then we go up and you can see we've got like 
a square you know there's a full square shape that will appear but that's going to be halfway curve it down and you've just got a little triangle there on the 145225 and again the next line up that comes through right on the 145 line comes just underneath and then you've got curves over the back there's two mustard one and you can just indicate the far so now we've got the horizontal lines and we come up and we want to point there point there just to the right of the center line just inside the one two five and we come up and it gets closer and that's how we do the dot to dot and do the same lower and you can see how we're going to make that square just put the points on come above the 225 line and we've got another point on that line then right on the 165 line and then it starts to curve around up the back and you just follow the dot to dot lines that you've made that curves up and then from underneath the jumper collar, collar the hem you can see how that follows goes up and follows the line from above then we've got these kind of mustard lines they're going to go in between the dark ones that we've already put on and then we want the mustard line that's following the curve around in between these two so that curve comes all the way down and there we've got the complete outline down now of V using the grid system and the simple shapes now we've got to erase out all of the grid and some of the construction lines and then we can start the shading so anyway I'm coming back in with my new uh, Mars plastic large eraser because I do really think I threw it in the bin. I was just cleaning stuff off and I think I might have just knocked it just off camera. Underneath my desk I've got a bin so when I sweep up all of these rubbings out I put them in the bin that's just underneath my table to the left and I think I knocked my rubber into the bin and then when I emptied said bin the rubber that I've had for a few years and probably used a third of it disappeared so because <laughs> it really normally you knock a rubber and it takes you 10 minutes to find it because it's hit the floor and boinged off somewhere anyway I've not found it that it's boinged off so again I'm using this paper so because I only put tiny little bits I can press on and not get grease on the paper off my hand and I only use tiny little bits of masking tape to hold the paper down and uh, it just means I can rub quite toughly and get these lines off quite easily this is why when I say to you at the very beginning you don't have to draw these lines as dark as I do because it's easier than to rub them out so again there's lots of space on this so I can get an absolute load off using this rubber And if you have only got, I mean, quite a lot of corners, as that corner's gone off. So we've pulled all that off. Now I can come in. Inside that part of the jumper. Then we've got inside his neck. Coming over to the highlight. Sorry, from the highlight to the shadow. 
then we've got his face all this wonderfully highlighted face and I've just noticed here where we've got his hair fortunately the line is in the right place so I'm just drawing that in quickly before we go any further with the rubber again I think most people on the planet call them erasers we just called them rubbers in England because you are rubbing out the pencil now there's on his nose top of his lip and his chin in that shadow part in this part of his hair and his head now again now I'm getting quite close to bits that that's too big for so I can now come in with uh, again it's the same kind of eraser it's a Mars plastic and it just allows me a little bit more control so in these finer bits means I don't lose a lot of the drawing so inside his eyeball there I'd have rubbed out his eye down the nose the, over the, the shadow over the top of the lip inside the upper lip itself inside this part the kind of little D shape of the left nostril next to the chin and even inside the shirt and you can get them finer than this which is really good if you want absolute phenomenal accuracy like in the top of my little mechanical pencils I tend not to use in these drawing lessons they've got very small erasers if you check out the kind of beginners pencils video it's it's actually at the beginning of the how to draw a zombie with a zombie pencil I show you all the pencils and materials that I actually use and that's in the how to draw playlist so again on, on this one now I can actually rub out these horizontal and vertical grid lines And know that I'm not obliterating my drawing again these all the construction lines around his eye Ooh. don't blow when you've got that much on that's quite uh, something else again on the shirt and in the tie inside that lower lip now just dust that off and surprisingly my bit of card that I dust it onto has disappeared so I've just grabbed another piece that was to hand it's probably behind me so now I'm just using a big two inch brush that four and a half nearly five centimeters and it just allows me to sweep this off as best I can without smudging my drawing a lot and then I can see if I've got any more lines that I need to rub out and I've noticed I have and I'm now going to come in with this electric rubber again it's, it's just smaller and it just means I've got a little bit more directional control and I can just touch it and because the eraser spins it does the rubbing out for me 
Now I've only had one of these very recently. I've not used one of these before. Uh, and it's just a good little tool. Again, I've lost a bit of the construction lines, but that's okay. There's one inside the ear. That's going to be dark when we fill in the hair. And so that's going to be really good on the neck, inside the shirt. Again, that bit of hair in the forehead. There we have, just fill in some of those lines again, that just rubbed out, just so it doesn't look too empty. And there we have V, his complete outline drawn in, ready to be shaded in. So <clears throat> now we're just coming back in with the 2B pencil and very lightly we're going to fill in the tone across V's face. Now, again, I'm just using the tip of the pencil and I'm not twisting it so as it will flatten down. <clears throat> so just fill in the tonal area as quickly as I can. And because we've got such a strong highlight here and here, that's where we need to be a little bit more careful. But you can see like the strongest highlight is on his nose down here. And even his eyeball is toned in. And so I just put in this first general tone quite quickly just to cover all the area as much as I can. And I'm just kind of going around and filling in the shapes, like I say, underneath his nose. Now here I'm going very lightly as I come across his face on all of this really light area. Now you could use a 2H pencil and that will give you very very soft fine gradation but a 2b as you can see will do the light tone work quite nicely and quite quickly and it just takes practice like i say you can see my pencil going backwards and forwards just filling in the shapes again the upper lip And then the lower lip, just filling that in, filling the tone, you know, it's a little bit darker on the upper lip. Now on the ear, again, I'm just filling all of the general tone in quite quickly, just being careful as we come down to the earring. Now we come down onto his neck and the light on this side, this is very bright on the, the collar. That's one of the brightest areas so I won't be filling that in. But I will just smudge it a little bit using some kitchen roll. Again someone left a comment 
on a video it's like is it okay to use tissue paper it's like yeah you can use toilet tissue or a, a handkerchief tissue I use kitchen roll it's a bit thicker but you know they are made for a specific purpose so it does kind of help so there's the tone inside the shirt and then this one we've got tone on the outside again you can fill in the squares a bit darker and then light on the top now coming with my kitchen roll and this is just something that that I do uh, that I like to do again on the cheek I'm just smoothing that first layer down all across everywhere where I've just put it and it just kind of smooths out the pencil lines and this is kind of if you want to go for hyper realistic you've got to build this up really slowly and take your time but I try and get all of this locked down very very quickly for you uh, and just smooth over the lips and that's picked up a load of pencil again, on the sleeve now again I'm going to use a clean bit just on this shirt and the pencil that's already down will push it over and that way you've not got the darker tone now, I actually missed off some of the crosses on the shirt down here in this little section that happens but again you can put those in later so now back with the 2b pencil and we're going to increase the tone of the darker shadows around the drawing now I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand a little bit and that's allowing me just to pivot from my shoulder it's a bit freer rather than resting my hand down on the piece of paper I've got this darker line see now I've got a very very uh, sharp dark line there so I'm just pinching my putty rubber and I can pull that up and just come back in with a little bit of tone and smudge that across and we'll build that up in a bit because we don't want that dark line now a little bit of shade underneath the ear then coming up now as we come over to the eye you can see we've got this shadow start to curve across into his left eye socket and then it comes up underneath the hair in between his two eyebrows and underneath the hair going up to the top and then you can see we've got this diagonal little bit of shadow coming down and then the curve that goes underneath his left eye again I'm just being very careful same thing here just a little bit too sharp <sighs> a line right on the corner of that nose but here we've got a little triangle of shade And coming down underneath the nose we've got a complete darker patch and the edge of the nose a 
right next to this highlighted part that's just coming up. And this is where with shadow you build the tone up slowly and carefully. So halfway down in between the, this little kind of leaf shape, just using the flat of the pencil, just filling that shadow down. Again, the curve coming over the eye. And then we've got dark underneath his left eye coming into the shade right on the right hand side of his face. Again, we can increase the dark underneath this hair over his left eye. Again, I'm just looking at the reference. And just building up the tone carefully and slowly underneath the hair, as you can see, as it comes up into that V shape that we drew. And underneath, again, if we come down now, this shadow caused by his nose. Coming down underneath the right nostril. Then the upper lip. And we just follow that over. And straight away you can see we've got more three dimensionality shadow caused by the top lip on the lower lip right into that corner then underneath the lower lip this C shape that comes around and then comes up the chin the lightness just coming along the side of his chin and his cheek and you see we come up to the corner of the mouth and we've got the shape and then the point that kind of goes up to his left nostril and then the shadow or just the curve of the face it's not shadow as much as like shadow on this side but the curve of the face, it's just a slightly darker tone. And we bring that all the way down. Again, on the ear, coming down to the neck. And then it's a darker tone just underneath the neck caused by the jaw and the cheek then just above you can fill all of that in go over the even darker part and then we can just increase that a little bit and I'm using the flat of the 2B pencil not twisting the pencil so that I get this really lovely flat tone going all across the neck. Now, coming up the side of his cheek. We're just building the tone up carefully and quickly. right up to the corner now again if you if you want to become in years time a hyper real pencil artist you've got to spend days so things like my uh portraits time lapses they are days of drawing now i i don't actually count myself as a mega hyper real artist because i know you've got to spend 
one, two, three, four weeks on a on a very complex drawing. Whereas I'll I will spend two or three days on a on a person a two a two drawing two days on a drawing uh, that's fine for me. Whereas like eighty hours on one face two weeks work that's a lot and you've got to take your time. But I'm giving you the techniques that you can build up those skills. So again, this one needs to be a little bit darker. And you build up your tones slowly. Again, just up the nose, just being careful. But already now you can see we've got more three dimensionality on V. Purely because we've put those tones in very, very quickly. And again, we'll darken them down as we do more detail. We'll add and build up more tone as we go. And when we put his hair in very quickly, that'll fill in so much because he's got such dark hair. So here, coming down off his lips, we've got following the shape and form of the shadow. And then we'll have to build up the, the tones again on this side of his face. Underneath, underneath that corner again. So now underneath his left eye, the curve that comes around. And that V shape. Going up to the hair and around where his eyebrow is. So I'm going to come in again. I'm going to be a little bit more direct. I'm folding up to a point using the kitchen roll and I'm Starting on the lighter parts, coming around his cheek, just smoothing that down, going up to where the no around the nose, the left nostril, around his eyes. Again, I'm just pushing the pencil a little bit, softening it out, but it's giving me the softer tones that I want for the flash. And I can see already, like coming up the cheek here, it's going to have to be much darker. Again, I want to have a bit more control, so I've gone to a cleaner part now. And I'm really just softening that edge. Again, underneath the eye, right into the corner of his right eye socket. Again, I'm just pushing the pencil around. And that's looking quite lovely. I'm pushing the pencil down there, following the curve of the cheek and just pushing the pencil up. Again, like there, I can see I've gone over the line. It doesn't matter, you can leave that in or you can use an eraser and clean up the edge. That's personal choice. So, now I'm going to come in, just push that over his lips. Now, with a 4B pencil, and this is sharpened, I'm going to come in, oh, get my chair in the right place, and we're going to do his left eye. Now, starting from the tear duct, We've got this dark that comes up and over and the real dark comes to match this point here but this is the upper eyelid that comes up and then curves over 
and softly goes over towards the corner and then you get this lovely diagonal line of shadow but that's much softer and then the underneath part of the upper eyelid caves up and comes right into the corner where the iris is Now I'm softening the edge because it's a little bit thicker. That's where you've got the shadow. And then I'm just indicating so lightly some of his eyelashes that are coming off. And then we've got the dark here. Now there's hair coming down from above and that's coming right across his eyeball. Now I'm going to put the corner in the tear duct and you've got the very dark around the triangle and then I'm softening it and you can see it's a little bit lighter inside but I'm using the pencil just to fill that in and darken it down and then the tear duct comes across and then you've got this curved shape that comes down underneath his lower eye. You've got that curve that comes right around. Now it's actually quite highlighted but because I've been soft when we actually put the highlight on that'll help using the putty rubber. Now the crease right in the corner just comes over just not as dark as above and I'm doing it very softly and there's a line above it's going to be highlighted. Then we can just darken that down. Now the edge of his iris is darker. We come down and we've got this little highlight that comes across so don't draw the dark line all the way down the outer circumference of his iris. Then you've got the pupil, the dark of his pupil. And then that lovely dark rich hazel colour of his iris. It's not jet black right in the corner but it's very dark. And then a little bit lighter. So we've got, you can see this kind of shadow going up over the eyeball. And his iris becomes lighter as it comes around the outside. And then the same for the lower part. And then the highlight comes about half to two thirds across the iris. Then we've got a little bit of tone right in the corner. This is where the 4B, because it's softer, is just great for this graduation of simple tone. Now well, there's a highlight here. So I'm leaving that highlight to show, filling in the shadow caused by the upper eyelid and then just graduating it very very carefully and there straight away we've got V's left eye looking out at us now if we do the same I've twisted the pencil a bit so I've got a sharp point for his right eye right in the corner we've got Where his tear duct is goes to that point then we can get the curve going up to the high point that goes all the way up and over got the curve goes and then just drops down right on the edge and you got the underneath part of his 
upper eyelid, the edge of his iris, and then the lower part and his pupil. So I'm doing his pupil very dark. Now, again, the same with that highlight, don't go all the way down. So I've got the edge of his iris, filling his pupil out a little bit more, and then coming to the bottom lower part of his eyelid. Now I can fill the dark in of the iris coming up underneath. And then you've got that kind of reflected highlight of the underneath part of his eyelid. So just don't cover that too much. Then the tone of his iris coming around that little slither of highlight. Coming onto his eyeball. Now right in the corner it's fairly dark and then we see we've got this fantastic shadow that's coming up caused by the upper eyelid that's quite strongly defined then you've got the kind of little flesh tone and then the tone coming around the lower eyelid And on the pupil and there we've got V's eyes looking out at us so now quickly I'm going to indicate now where we need these eyebrows so I'm going to draw them in using the flat of the 4B pencil underneath the hair now again it's soft you know it, it, it you indicated but I'm again I'm doing it in the direction that the eyebrows would grow so here we've got this darker shadow of the upper right eyebrow going up underneath the hair. Again, I'm just being very careful, giving the direction of where those eyebrows are going to be. And now just carefully just fill in a little bit of the shadow in that nose and then a little bit of the dark in between the lips where that comes down to his lower lips and it just gives us some solid reference points so that's looking quite good and you can see we've now starting to get some really good points to build upon with the shadow and the shade so now we're going to come in with a 4b pencil and we're going to block in a lot of the hair so I'm using the flat of a 4B pencil just to get a kind of good mid-tone down. But even though I'm using the flat of the pencil, I'm drawing the hair in the direction that it needs to go. But again, I'm not pressing on too hard and we're going to do this 
really quick. You can see we've still got some highlights here on these shapes. Then we've got this little passage in the V there. And they're just using the point just to indicate some of the thinner lines. And this will all work together afterwards. So again, this is a hair tutorial. People ask me for hair tutorials. <clears throat> and it's like, well, every portrait that I've got where somebody's got hair, apart from Voldemort, there's a hair tutorial. So that's the bonus of doing these lessons the way that I do. So here we've got the coming down the side of his left cheek and just filling the shaping and then coming down to over the ear. And this will help actually putting the shades in around his face that we need because rather than having all of the white space we will then have the darker tones of his hair that will allow us to then add the darks wherever we need so now I'm I'm literally just hovering my hand so I can move that paper off because I'm not resting my hand at all on the paper. So here I'm being very careful. And it says quite light as it comes around the back of his ear. And then curving up the back of his head. Right the way up. And here we've got that dark patch in between the highlighted part. And then we've got this dark patch that comes down. Like we've got that one there, we've got this one here. And you've got this kind of nice leaf shape of dark that comes down behind the ear. You can see already we're just really filling the shape and space in. It looks really good and I'm going to hold the paper as well uh, using the actual paper that I'll lean on because I'm really pressing on and I don't want the paper to like fly off. So again on these parts we want, you see the highlight comes down a little bit there, you've got this little V shape there in the highlight. And coming down to on top of the ear. Now up above on the top of the head. So we're going to indicate this central part first. A little darker at the top. And again, I'm just using the flat of the pencil. I am spinning it around so that it just doesn't become too flat in one place. Because then you'll have to tip your pencil up and you'll actually start scoring into your paper whereas you want to use the flat quite well then you've got the second like this M you've got the second darker part you can see how that's got a couple of lines that come down through the highlighted part we can bring that down and then again these parts as it curves over the top of his head again you, you just keep drawing going in the direction that the hair grows and that's what makes it look really natural now again I'm doing this very very quickly if you want to spend days doing hair you can make it look absolutely photographic and that's a choice you can do that that's brilliant if you want to pursue that level of drawing. All you've got to do is what I'm doing now, but much slower with far more detail. And application and patience. So again, here now on this side, we've got this lovely dark patch. Again, I'm going up and down carefully where 
I need to indicate the hair growing and going through that highlighted section. So now I'm, I'm using the very tip of the pencil very gently and indicating some of the lines of the hair through that highlight. Now, coming down over his eye, using the flat of the pencil still, and that comes, you get a bigger V there where that's going up, and then right at the top here. So you can see we've got. Now I'm going to use the thinner part of the pencil because it's a little bit thinner and because we've done all of that the pencil has flattened and then we can go back to the more flatter part of the pencil for this bit that comes down over his eyebrow and that goes up and then we can do these little ones next to and then this comes across and kind of fills that area in. Now we're going to make that darker and there's got all the hairs that are coming going to come down and cross over this little V part here but we don't need to do that just yet because we need to get the rest of the tone in and then we can work on the face and then add those details last they are on top literally the hair is on top of his forehead so we put those hairs on last of all when we've done the tonal work that we need to in his eye and nose and around the two eye sockets so again we can just indicate a few here because it is a little bit darker and take that tone of the eyebrow right through to where that goes across on the side, left hand side of his head. Now back on the top we've got a nice dark line that comes over. We've got this V here that's very dark and then we can just fill in these tones coming down to the highlighted part now again here underneath coming up to the highlight just being very careful as we come to the edge of where the parting comes down over his right eye using the flat of the pencil now coming down over the eyebrow and right down the side of his head. And again we've got that shadow so I'm going to soften that up where it comes right next to the side of his eye socket and the top of his cheek. And we come down to this V and it's all completely dark. So just be careful so that you don't go over the cheek. Just be very, very careful. Now, again, I'm pivoting from my shoulder just gently and carefully, but pressing on quite dark because this is going to be very, very black. Now, again, you can see how the hair follows the shape and form of his head. So there I'm just showing you drawing some lines as if the hair is there but very light and that's what's inside that dark and so we need to take that all the way up and we've got that dark now so I'm going to go over but using the flat of the pencil because we put that mid-tone down first you're getting the strong lines that are creating the shape that we need of his hair as it comes down. Now again, we've got lots of hairs 
wispily just off the top here, but we can just indicate them quickly and gently, and we'll detail that up a little bit more presently. So now, right in that V, we've got a dark part. And then as the hair comes down into that highlighted bit, I'm using the tip now. You see the pencil's vertical pretty much. And I'm just using it, it's still the 4B, but it just means I get a nice, sharp, quick, dark line in the hair. Now, that's gone quite blunt, and I need to be able to draw around the logo of the earring quite carefully. So, I'm coming in using the paper, I'm going to draw around the logo first, but again, in exactly the same way as I've done the other hair, I'm filling that in, and I'm actually filling in inside the logo too, in the way that the hair grows. Just line next to the logo first on the earring, then you can just go up and down very carefully. As if the hair, well, the hair is growing behind the earring and underneath his ear. So, there we have coming down right to the neck behind the Chanel earring. You see, we've got that direction of the hair folding in on itself underneath. Again, the earring. Just being careful not to go over the neck and over the earring as well. Now the ear. That little dent and then it, how it comes back around. Comes to the top of the earring where it goes onto the loop into the ear. Then we've got over the top. And then going up the side of his head. Now, we've got some lighter little grey lines coming down as it folds in on itself, the hair. And we've got these little wispy bits just sticking out at the bottom of the hair over the collar. Now again, straight away, we're actually seeing that we've got now a much darker tone and we can tell that this isn't dark enough at all down the side of his face. But before we get there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the kitchen roll that I used earlier. Just fold it, it doesn't matter about like the slightly darker bits that are on, because we've used this before. Don't need a particularly clean bit. Now, I'm just smoothing this up, again, in the direction of the hair. Now I'm going over the highlight, I'm just smoothing that over, so that we've got tone all the way over the hair. So there's no blank paper actually showing through. That's looking really good. Again, you can see that just darken that up very quickly. Now it's literally, you've, you've pulled some of the graphite off. So we need to go back in. I'm gonna use the dirty putty rubber because it's very, very thin in this highlighted areas. And again, just as I do with the pencil, I am going in the direction of the hair just pinch it so as it's thin. Re-indicating 
some of the highlights and we can go a little bit lower down where they need to be and we can just follow the shape and form around his head so here on this where you got this M at the top we've got this lovely highlight that kind of follows the flow down from the top all the way down to the edges of this flick coming across the front of his head you see there we've now got that little highlight there and a few more just a little bit lower down but because the putty rubber that I'm using is old and been used a lot it won't pull up all the pencil it kind of gets full faster rather than the cleaner one so again just dabbing across getting the highlights in this band that comes across his head now onto the right hand side of his parting And so, even on this bit like where we went over on the cheek, I'm just cleaning up now on the side of the cheek. It'll just pull it up nice and easily. And again, just some highlights coming across. And that's how the hair does crisscross over itself, which is actually really nice. So now, coming back in, using the sharper point of the 4B pencil, because we've got this softened tone, this mid-tone underneath, as we put these sharper lines in, because it's going on top of that mid-tone you're already seeing now that we're getting nice three-dimensional effect in the hair it looks more real but this is working with the grey mid-tones that we put in and then wiping it over even over the highlight and then taking out again using the putty rubber to get the highlights back in And this is very impressionistic it's just using you're making marks to create the illusion of the hairstyle that you're seeing now again you can draw if you want every single hair you can go very very slow and be hyper realistic but that does take a very long time And it is very therapeutic you can do that and, and really enjoy the process so if you want to develop your skills in that way absolutely fantastic and that's the beauty of drawing I love I love pencil I love just being able to use a pencil to recreate something and that's what I want to impart to all of you so here we've got this hair going up the back Here we've got a lighter bit going over, dark going right up the back of his head. And this is truly the joy of drawing. Being able to do this is fantastic. And that's why I have such fun just encouraging you with learning these techniques so that you can develop your drawing skills and who knows where it can take you yeah you, know, you could become a complete portrait artist or you could become 
an animator or someone who designs the characters for computer games or for special effects for films. There's so much out there now. It's absolutely phenomenal. Or you could just draw for fun and relaxation and enjoyment. So now carefully underneath this here, just darkening that down a little bit. You can see already we're getting much better three-dimensional definition. Again, I'm just twisting the pencil so I'm getting the sharper point. It's a four B, it's going to get flatter quicker. So here now, where this curves over, we've got a V and then darker above. Again, right on the top, we've got the dark going up to the top of his head. Coming down into where the centre parting is. And we just need to keep adding the lines carefully and again I just keep looking at the reference where I'm going across his head and just whacking it in really quickly you can take your time but I'm just trying to get this down so that you can see you can even slow it down on the YouTube uh, player itself if you go into the settings you can actually make this slower or faster so Now, the dark coming right down around the side of his head. Now, you could use an 8B for the darkness in his hair. That, that'd that be fine. Here we've got a bit of a V. But a 4B, you can still do quite a lot. And so, now, that's... the bulk of that in and you can see that's looking really really good and we've got to build up the detail on that in a little bit but again now I'm just quickly squinting and you can see like the kind of gradation coming into this highlighted bit coming down And coming up and you just need to carefully fill in those gaps with the tone and just by twisting the pencil and having those sharper lines you're actually filling it in and making it look very very real very quickly now again we've still got more to do we can build that up and we can make that work with more detail using the putty rubber and the pencil as we develop but we're going to do more on the face next now we're coming back in with the 2b pencil and we're going to build up some of the tone so I'm starting up at the top where his hair covers his forehead. I sharpened both pencils, the 2B and the 4B, just so as I've got a long flat tip ready to be able to work. So we're coming under the hair. where the hair is causing the shadow. And then here we've got, you can see there's a kind of triangle. So you've got the shape of his eyebrow in the eye socket. It comes across and then comes down to the edge of his eye.
and we need to just gently and carefully build up the tone in the eye socket and then we're curving over top of his nose and then where the hair comes down over the right eye we've got a little bit of shadow just on that curve as it comes up and over now resting my left hand on top of my right hand we're leaving a little highlight above the upper eyelid we're bringing the shadow all the way across to this area here where the corner of his eye socket is and you can see there's a another diagonal shape here of tone and so we just gently filling that in and the shadow under the eyebrow and the hair coming down the side of his head and again you can see here it comes right across from the corner of the eye socket you just got this little highlight bit there left and then we've got this little bit of shadow caused by this hair coming down the left hand side of his cheek and they've got a bit of a highlight here and just not going right to the edge So now coming down by the nose, we've got a light vertical line that comes down to the D shape of the left nostril where it joins his cheek. And then coming around the left nostril itself and up underneath we've got a little bit more tone but again leaving a little highlight right next to the nostril and then as we come underneath we've got more shadow underneath the nostril and it curves up and again just a little reflected highlight right inside the nostril and a little kind of fold in between the center of the upper lip that's a bit darker again this is just just what I do and now I've done in so many other videos you keep looking at the reference and you just build and add some tone as you go around and as you build up your confidence you can decide where you want to do your tone and you could literally just completely work on an eye until you get all of that finished and then work over the next section it purely is it's just down to personal choice but by doing this so if you look at my time lapses say of Prince Harry and Meghan or Avicii and, and things like that there's the just the time lapses where there's no lesson they've taken days and I do kind of work on an area until it's much more finished 
but I do also do this where I work then on the whole face and build up the tone and you'll see that very very quickly and that's just how I've developed the way that I work over the years so here we've got the shadow coming down over his lip and it comes down right over the lip but it's much darker inside here so we're going to have to build that up I'll, I'll use the 4b pencil because i want it really soft and nice now coming back up underneath his left eye we've got the shadow caused by the fold of his lower eyelid and then again you can see we've got this slightly lighter tone and now we're really starting to develop the three-dimensional shape of his face again just darkening it coming round in the corner of the eye socket underneath where the hair is now right in this eye socket it's We've got the highlight, like we did here, just above the eyelid. So I'm being careful not to go too dark right on top of the eyelid. Again, we'll pull that out using the putty rubber. Now I'm filling in much more of the mid-tone using the 2B pencil and then the darker we'll build that up with the 4B and we come down to underneath the right eye we want this tone come right out to the corner where the hair comes right down you can see how it just comes across and joins and then we get the shadow coming down his cheek again there's a reflected highlight here off this collar And there's a bit of one like that on KSI as well. He was wearing a white t-shirt, I think. So, just filling in more of the mid-tone using the 2B pencil. We need to come right up. You can see where the lips are there. Then it comes up and curves to that point and then we've got where well, we've got the C shape underneath the chin and then right underneath the lower lip and the shadow around the corner left hand side of his mouth right in the edge
Now again, we've got this little V shape that comes away from the nose and then it just drops down to the corner of his mouth and then you come right the way down to the chin and I'm using the tip of the pencil I've like raised it up a little bit the angle so I'm not using a large flat area so I've just got nicer control and then we're going to come up the cheek leaving this highlighted area here can even lighter still just putting a little bit of transition tone coming over and again even lighter still the curve of the cheek going up underneath the eye You can see we're just already getting much more nicer three-dimensional quality to V's face. So again now using the flat of the pencil. Coming down, just went over there a ah, little bit too much. So I'm going to just... dab it slightly and very very gently just dab that with the putty rubber because his skin is so fair and well lit I don't really want light, darker lines going over the jawline now again this jawline you can see here I did very very dark just so you can see the construction drawing you don't have to do it that dark as I keep on saying. And then you'd have the really nice transition created purely by your tone. So anyway, we've put that shadow now in, well, not shadow, we've, we've darkened the tone, the shadow caused by his chin. And now we want this shadow caused by his collar. Coming around to the right hand side. And again, I'm just using the 2B pencil to try and increase the mid tones a little bit. Because this needs to go much darker. And we'll do that with the 4B. But here, this transition, where his Adam's apple is, you, you've got the, the edge of his tie and you come up and we just want that soft gradation. And you get a little bit more control using the 2B pencil. Now, I'm going to increase the shadow on the white collar. And that's looking quite good. Again, the shadow caused by the hair on his left cheek. We can just darken that up that little bit more. Now we're coming into his ear. So the, this little P shape, the entrance to his ear canal, it's darker. And then you've got 
a kind of little oval and then you've got the curve just nice and light be careful but you're leaving a little bit of a highlight where it comes down onto this crease this d-shaped kind of crease Again, I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand. So my hand actually isn't on the paper. And then we bring that shadow down. And then behind the hair, we've got the shadow of the crease going right up into the top of the ear. So that goes up curves over Put the shadow right at the top and then we want the shadow all the way down the ear coming down now that's the mid-tone all in place now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the brush again. I'm just wiping it on the tissue every now and then. And occasionally in between drawings, I'll actually just go and wash them. And all you do is just get some soap in your hand and little, you know, a little bit of soap or if it's you know soap from a dispenser and you can see I'm literally brushing where the shadow needs to be where it's lighter you just don't press on as hard you just literally let the brush do the work because you don't want to brush around too much of the graphite from the slightly surrounding areas but you're just literally softening the transitions it's like now where it's a little bit darker I can just press on a little bit harder and it's literally softening the transitions for me very very nicely but as I was saying just put a little a little bit of soap in your hand, palm of your hand in water and you literally just wash the brush out and then you know that you've got it as clean. You won't actually get rid of it. It'll stay black like this. But you know that you've got a clean brush. So you can either use soap from a pump dispenser or you can use... Uh, a bar of soap and all you do is just you know wet it and just like I'm doing on this paper you just rub it in into the the soap a little bit till you get some soap in there and then just do the same thing in the palm of your hand wash it and clean it out so we're coming down chin to the bottom this C shape softening the transitions around the mouth just literally I'm just brushing over his lips it's that simple now here is the same tonality as here on my drawing but it isn't this is darker and this is where when you're doing this you can then literally as I'm softening the transition of the tone over I am literally brushing in pencil onto his cheek just softening the eyes just picking some forby up I say I'm just literally just brush in the forby
and that. is really looking lovely. I hope you're enjoying this. This is great. I love doing these videos for you guys. It's an absolute joy and pleasure. I've been drawing that for over 40 years and doing art for pretty much all my life, really. And to have the tips to be able to do this is fantastic. Now that's looking really good and we need to build it up so we'll do that with the next section and we'll start adding some darker shadows. So now we're in with a 4B pencil. And we've got a lot of darker tones to bring in. Again, if you squint your eyes, you can kind of see where the darker tones actually need to be. So again, I'm using the flat of the pencil. So as we're getting a nice wide area of tone. Need to come right down to the corner of the tear duct. And then we've got, very carefully I'm doing this. You can see there's that crease line coming over the top of the eye, leaving that little highlight. And then we've got Coming up over here, we've got the curve created by the higher part of his upper eyelid going into the shadow area of his eye socket. So we've got this lighter highlight here, and there's a lighter highlight here, but we've got dark coming round into the hair. And you can pretty much totally soften that into the hair. But just by doing it that little bit different, the softness of the pencil rather than the hardness of the digging in with on the hair. You're creating different tonal textures. And then right down by the eye, it's very dark, but we've got a reflected highlight on the side of his face and his head right next to the hair. So even though we've got this very, very lovely, rich, dark shadow, and just crisping up the hair next to his head. You've got a little highlight, so just leave it. Don't go right next to the hair when you come down to the eye. You can darken that eye down. And this then comes down the cheek to the point where it meets the hair. Now I'm very lightly feathering some tone into the hair. So as that highlight is there, but not too sharp. So again, now coming up, creating the curve of the upper eyelid, we've got that really nice, rich, dark, soft shadow. And then going off up into that corner. And then right in the corner here, we've got the darkness of the shadow. Now I'm really using the tip. I'm just angling it so as I've got the tip creating the shadow that I need. And 
and then again just gradating it out softly and simply now we've increased the tone so much we've lost his eyebrow so the lower part of the eyebrow is darker but again I'm using the very tip of the pencil now doing the lines in the, the direction that the eyebrow is growing and then but I'm doing it all inside that nice fuzzy shape that we created for the eyebrow again doing the lines in the direction that the eyebrow grows and already that's really looking nice and three-dimensional and more real so now again using the very flat at the tip of the pencil softening that off underneath the eyebrow and then creating that shadow crease line going up into that corner now again using the soft we've got this dark that comes right down off the eye to the fold underneath his right eye and then going up to the tear duct and the side of his nose just being careful to leave the highlight showing as much as we can Again, just softening it, being very, very careful. Using the flat of the pencil, not the tip. And that's how you get this really lovely, nice tone. And then come across diagonally. But then soften the tone underneath the eye. And then that darker shadow coming down. And you just build up the dark very slowly. Gently softening it. So again, this darker eyelash line, it's a bit fuzzy. So, you know, you soften it off and you just use the pencil very carefully because it's easier adding tone than it is taking it away so now I'm just twisting the pencil a little bit so I'm not using the complete flat and carefully apart from the highlighted bit above the eyelash the upper eyelid I'm just pretty much cross hatching going over and it just unifies all of that tone. So again now right at the top of the hair it's darker so we can soften that as it comes down then just get lighter a little bit easier as we come down leaving that reflected highlight underneath the hair and then darker where it comes to the eyebrow at the top. Now it looks like he's got a black eye, but that's because that's the only area you know we need to bring that shadow down all the way down the side of his cheek. But before we do that, we've got this nice little darker patch 
Again, this V shape here in his left eye. And it kind of looks bright because we haven't actually filled his lips in yet. So the face looks very bright and also the burgundy jumper. When we whack in some tone on that in a bit and the black tie, that'll then unify a lot of the drawing. But again, we're bringing this tone out in the corner of his eye socket. Coming over the top, being careful not to go over that highlighted part where it comes over and then under the upper eyelid. And then underneath the lower eyelid. And again, we've got the shadow going right up to the eye. Just careful. And then we've got right in this corner where it comes up, got a little bit of shadow. And just increase that corner part and now you can see we've already getting both eyes to look three-dimensional filling the tone in underneath the hair right where it goes to the eye so if you haven't got that strong highlighted part underneath the hair. And just defining right in that corner. Now, same thing we've got to darken down his eyebrow. And you've got the dark just coming out past this bit of hair that comes down. And then this goes off over behind this hair that swings across. Again, just keep looking at the reference. And I also need to darken this down underneath this hair. Just to give me, again, you, you, you're then unifying the drawing and making the three dimensionality of the face become much more real. So now I'm just going to, with the tip of the pencil, darken up his nostrils. Indicating, because it's nice and sharp because of doing all that flat work. So we can really get the darkness of his nostril right. And then when we come in with the flat, again, you're doing shapes. But when I talk about using how to draw anything, part one, using shapes, it's so like here. You've just got a rectangle, a square of shadow, you know, and a kind of triangle shape. And that's all you're doing with these shapes. So here, just above the nostril on the curve of the nose, it's like a tiny little triangle. Like I said, there's a triangle, there's a V shape there. 
of shadow even when you're doing your tonal work thinking of it of areas of shapes is so much easier to then break your drawing down into sections so there we've got that darker shadow the bottom of the left nostril where it side joins the side of his cheek now I'm really lightly using the side of the pencil to increase that tone coming over underneath his nose now completely underneath the left nostril we've got this shadow starting to come across and then the curve coming on right underneath the nose to the center part in between his lips and then you've got this really defined horizontal line of shadow so you've got the darker shadow on this side and it goes a little bit light and then you've got this little square of darker shadow underneath the side of his right nostril and you can see from where it curves here there's a little bit of a highlight and it just juts out to do the dark shadow right on the edge of the nose and then we need to darken the tone down as it comes down underneath the nostril and so that kind of reflected highlight underneath shows us how dark we need this darker shadow coming down the side of the right hand part of his upper lip Again, just filling in that darker area. And that now looks very strange because you've just got this dark patch coming down from underneath his face, underneath his nose, or down onto his face. And because the rest of it is so light, it just looks very, very strange. So now I'm just going to quickly define the shape of the lips a little bit more using the point of the pencil that curve where it comes right to the corner and then down center of the lip going up I'm drawing the lines in the direction that the skin on the lips would grow. You've got that darker shadow on the lips going up. And then it, the flesh kind of goes lighter on the left hand side of his lips. Again, I'm just indicating so that we, we've got more tone filled in. Lower part of the lip, leaving the highlight showing. I 
and just matching that dark a little bit and then all of a sudden that lower part of his face the mouth actually looks connected to that shadow but now we're going to come down the side of his face using the tip of the pencil just darkening and sharpening up that line now here we've got this reflected highlight but coming all the way down to his chin Again, this C shape curve. There's no real hard edges. So you just got to be careful and just build the tone up. Slowly softening out the gradation as you go. So now from this bit, we're going to come up and it comes up to quite close to the lip. And then goes across his cheek. To Bullet just below the hair, opposite the nose. And that's the kind of defining edge on his cheek for that shadow. So now I'm just filling the shadow in nice and quickly, but carefully going right the way up to where it joins the edge of his cheek and then as we come down that's where the reflected highlight starts to feed in so I'm not pressing on as hard now So you've got that shape of that reflected highlight. And even inside it, there's a little bit more of shadow line. Now again, coming right up to the mouth and up to this shadow coming off the nose we can bring that shape down but lighter grade it in just that little bit soften the transition as it comes around the cheek and then down by the nose And very lightly just coming round creating that curve of the cheek that's looking rather splendid so now we've got this much darker shadow right underneath the chin to the collar using the flat of the tip to get that really nice dark but again you can just soften it then really quickly and easily so we can bring that shadow right underneath make it nice and dark up in the corner
we bring that across to where his neck is and again you've got a reflected highlight caused by the shirt and we're just filling the shape in using the soft side of the pencil just being very very careful so again just building up and increasing that tone and then working from this side we can then come down and grade it a little bit so as it all blends in again the same at the bottom coming up the cheek up to the side Just increasing the shadow inside and then the lip it's it's nice and dark but it's very soft again we've got to detail those up much more down in between the nose So again, now I'm just coming back in with the brush. Just softening nice and carefully, but quickly. You can see I'm just really quickly pushing that around. Now this is a very, very soft brush. can use a stiffer brush to really push and that's what this is a little bit it's got stiffer fibers and I get my brushes from a company called Rosemary and Co and they've got an incredible selection of amazing artist brushes and I use them for my oil painting as well But this one with its chisel end means you can really direct that other one's very, very soft, which is great for like this area here on the chin. You can just circle it and it just softens it out nicely. And just over the lips just softening that tone <sighs> nicely gently and easily now we're going to come in and we're going to start detailing up some more of V's face we're going to work in the hair around the ear and just building up quite quickly but first I need my putty rubber and where we did all that work with a brush I'm now just cleaning up the edge of his face so I'm going to use the Mars plastic as well just because I've got so much space <sighs> that we can <sighs> clean that up 
rather nicely. <laughs> so, just cleaning that edge of his face up, and that's looking rather lovely. I am enjoying this. But anyway, we're now going to come in. Now, I'm because we're using the flat of this for all the shading, the point is very, very sharp. And we're going to come over and we're going to do the Chanel logo. And because we've got the edge, the way we did the outline, we can now use the sharp point of the 4B pencil. And it does flatten down quite quickly. <sighs> but it fills all of that space. Leaving the white edge. Quite nice and quite crisp. Again, just twisting the pencil a little bit. just to keep that sharpness but we can fill the black inside going to the edge of that Chanel logo And there, like I say, just straight away, because we did the outline, and we're working out towards the outline, it's worked in our favour. And you fill the inside out to fill up that space. So again, now just doing the hair at the bottom and we've got this deep shadow inside the collar. And softening the edge and the shadow as it comes over and then goes up the back of the neck, the side of the neck to the back of the collar. Now just crisping up underneath his ear the same way this comes around the edge at the back I'm not pressing on too hard here because it's a little bit lighter it's not jet black dark like the shadow created underneath his ear So we can take that right the way up over the top of his ear. Now again, we need to make this darker, the crease inside his ear right at the top. Just shadow just caused by the hair. Using the soft flat of the pencil that's just blunted down we've got inside his ear canal and then this dark shadow right at the bottom and then we can just bring a little bit more down on the hair now this pencil is getting quite short you can see it's just fitting inside my hand and I'll be using the pencil extender to give me some more life out of it. Now again, a little bit more shadow inside the ear canal, creating that just circular shape as it goes in. Again, a little bit of tone at the bottom of that kind of P, leaving that little highlight there at the top. Now again, just darken that up a little bit there 
the edge coming out and coming down to the bottom where the hair comes to that V right at the bottom. Now you can see his ear is looking really, really lovely. Now, just sharpening that, pop it in my pencil extender. Oh, and the tip, like I say, this is a 4B pencil, so it's really soft. <laughs> the tip just exploded as I was just pressed on too hard. So now, I'm indicating more of the hairs now, but just keep twisting the pencil so that I can keep it as sharp as possible. in this very dark patch. And because of all the mid-tone, you're putting these nice, fine, dark lines down. And it just gives more reality. Again, I'm drawing in the direction of the hair. So we've got the darker shadows there. Got a darker V shadow here and then round the back of the head. Going up to the top. Again, I'm just twisting and using the point of the pencil. Right at the top to indicate those quick, sharp lines that are created by each strand of hair. That V at the top there. And then as we come up to the highlight, you can see we've just got some lovely dark lines that come up so now just sharpening that up again so I've got a nice tip and then you can see we just got some nice edge lines that come out over the ear same here just we can increase those that comes up we've got that one coming over <laughs> and then we've got so I'm being very very light that diagonal shadow just coming over just nice and soft Then we can bring these hairs down in this thicker set of strands that come down. We've got more vertical ones there. Again, twisting the pencil, keeping it nice and sharp as much as we can with a soft 4B pencil. And you can see we've just got these diagonal lines coming down across the front of his forehead. And then we've got a few that are coming up next to his eye. And then coming down over the top of his nose. In between the center of his forehead. And we've got this dark strand that comes down over that right eye. And the curve coming down. Again, we can just... There you can see very quickly we're just getting that nice effect of the fringe. 
and the hairs separating coming down over his head. Again, in this dark area, you can just indicate lots of really nice fluid dark lines coming down. We can even darken the centre of the eyebrow up. Same on the left eyebrow. And that's looking fantastic. We've got this dark patch at the top. And we're just filling in now the details of the hair as quickly and nicely as possible. So again, I'm now just going to come in with the putty rubber on these bits on the fringe that come across. We can just indicate those few little highlights. You can see there that just lifts up that front part of his hair. Just pull enough off. So that if we now just come in with the sharpened pencil, we can really accentuate those darker lines that are coming across. And again, this is just a 4B. You could use an 8B, that's even darker, but it's softer, so the point will snap and, and will also blunt very, very quickly. That's looking fantastic. Now, if I just come in with the 2B, it's a much sharper point and doesn't flatten as quickly. And you just keep twisting it and you can get the really sharp lines very, very quickly. So now these hairs off the side and at the back that are just plinging out. Using the 2B it's easier because the, the point doesn't flatten down too quickly. So there's those wispy hairs. Again the same just coming off the back. Got some wispy hairs coming out. can just soften that down quite nicely. Now, back in with the 4B, got those darker strands coming over the ear, and then just finish them off with the 2B. Now, I'm gonna come in with the clean putty rubber because just pulling it to a point here on his nose just going up that's his strongest highlight and I'm just dabbing softening it out and then a little highlight up the edge pull a little bit out in the eye same on this eye, in the eyeball. But now just dabbing, just pulling it to a kind of rounded point. <sighs> just this area on the upper lip. 
coming around the side of the nostril and on the side of the left nostril and then kind of going up the side of the cheek just a couple little dabs you can see we're just getting that nice three dimensionality now Again, the same in the top of the cheek just softening that off and then if you just come in with the brush you just smooth a little bit over that stays completely nice whereas these just blend in that little bit now on the actual eye we want a bit of a highlight on the lower eyelid where that comes underneath that crease right in the corner and the upper eyelid over the top and again just at the top there and I'm just smoothing it with my finger and even here we can just above the right eye pick that out a little bit top of the eyelid of his right eye and then the top of that lower eyelid that edge point on the nose and there we've got some really good three-dimensional qualities because the highlights have pulled up we also need to do I'm going to come in using the darker putty rubber the edge of his ear right down the edge there's a highlight and then on the creases I'm just dabbing so that goes up right up to the top then on the fleshy bit of the lobe next to the hoop of the earring and the top part and again just coming in and soften that down quickly with the brush and then come in with 2B pencil we got where the earring actually goes into his ear and then we can just darken that down on the left hand side that's looking really lovely <laughs> so now coming back in with the 4B pencil we've got this darker shadow created by the collar so we just fill in the dark in and then softening it just above coming over the top of the collar And then going up the side of his neck and just feathering in that dark right the way up to the corner now just bringing that darker shadow down gradating it out graduating it as the curve of the neck comes around into the light
that's looking pretty good so now we're going to come in and we're going to detail up these lips and I'm using the 2B pencil because I don't want to just put too much dark on using the 4B and we can just control the 2B that little bit more so we've got the shadow coming up his lip and that comes up over the top a shadow coming across the front of his lip And then the upper lip, there's a kind of second shadow just halfway up. And then we want a little bit going up to the top of that V and then as it comes over. Now we've got this lovely dark underneath the centre part reflected highlight inside just and then this comes right the way over to the corner we can feather out the shadow around the corner of his mouth and then the lower lip we've got the stronger highlight here I'm just bringing the shade and the shape all the way across and then right underneath we can increase the tone just slightly of the shadow as it follows the shape of his lower lip up to the corner and again here this C part we can just build up that tone a little bit more I'm going to come in with the 4B pencil underneath his nose inside this shadow we can darken that down a little bit just inside you know going don't go right to the edge of it but it just accentuates that shadow that little bit and like we've done down here under the neck we can now using the soft of the pencil increase the shadow on the side of his cheek and coming out to the front of his chin right up to the side of his cheek We're just building the shadow up carefully leaving this little reflected highlight in right at the bottom of his chin and this is really really lovely so again coming up the side of his cheek just darkening that over again 
scan underneath the eye. We've got this fantastic dark all around the eye. Coming up into the corner of the eye socket. The shadow coming down, oops, caused by his nose over the tear duct. Now, I did just go over that little highlighted bit. Again, just gently using the point of the putty rubber. <laughs> That's now lifted off. Again, just adding some shadow detail underneath the hair on his left eye how that softens and curves underneath underneath those hairs Again, I'm coming back in quickly with the 2B pencil because the point of it is so much sharper I can press on and get that darker black lines that are coming over his eye and his eyebrow. Again, just coming in with the brush Just softening that down. And that's really working well for us. Getting there, now we've got to fill in the other bits and bobs on his shirt and jumper and his tie. But that's looking really lovely. I hope you're having fun. Right, so now we're going to quickly, because the focus is on V's face, we're going to quickly, using a 4B pencil, put in his burgundy jumper. So, I'm using the kind of tip of the pencil to indicate the ribbing on the collar of his jumper. Now, you could do this absolutely exact. You can see how it comes around like a clock, the hands of a clock as it comes around. And so like down here, you can see the angle. It's got to follow, just like hair, it's got to follow the shape and form of the jumper around his top of his upper part of his body and his chest. So because I'm being impressionistic you can do this quite quickly. And then but if you wanted to do this photo realistically this jumper would take you a week on its own. This bit's in dark shadow and then around and underneath we've got a soft dark shadow and then a little bit of shadow there. Again I'm now I'm just going to fill it in with quick tone. I'm not going to the edge of the paper and the 4B is great for this because it's it's just big and it'll flatten down quite quickly. And straight away that's given us a lot of coverage. Now you can if you wanted to you could just indicate really quickly the direction of the weave lines that you can see 
and again just like the lines around the collar you know I'm just cross hatching you've got to follow the shape of his chest and you can see how it just changes with the direction how it comes across Now again, I've just filled that in. That looks that actually looks quite nice. But because it's burgundy and there's no highlights and we've got the white on here, I'm just going to come in and not as much as I did on the face on that tone, so you can still see the pencil lines that I've created. Now I'm just pushing this over the collar as well. There's enough pencil, I've just pushed this over the collar. But that's actually quite nice and you can still see the cross hatching lines so now I'm coming in and we've got all of this shadow and that kind of comes down to about this part we've got the much darker bit coming under the neck kind of goes darker as that comes around by the collar and then we've got this fantastic shade coming out on the side of his right hand side caused by his head and his chin now again we've got a little bit of shade here and we can just now go over quickly you know reapply those diagonal quick tones and it all works together for us And then a little bit of dark tone coming underneath the collar and you can just go back over the lines that you've done for that ribbing and now I'm just going up and down using the soft of the pencil to fill in the shade on the actual collar all the way round but as we come round it's just you want a little bit darker to indicate the vertical lines going up to the very edge now we've got all around the tie dark going up above the tie into where His shirt is buttoned up at the top then we've got this diagonal line so I'm just darkening either side of it filling in but not completely dark and then where it curves you can darken it to meet that really deep shadow now again the tie coming down to meet the collar around this little logo again if you just draw up to the construction lines that we left on the tie of the logo on the tie and you're just kind of leaving an indication and then we can fill the rest of the tie in and that's just nice and dark again you can do this nice and quickly because you're focusing up here and you can see already that that's now really starting to give full three-dimensionality to the face 
we want to bring the shadow all the way down again the diagonal just dark and right next to it the top darker underneath but then we can fill in with a fairly dark tone without having to go jet black on the lot and then we've got this darker shadow underneath the tie and the collar and then a really dark one here this fold of his shirt underneath coming down to the collar so soften the edges and then you can make it very deep and dark inside now the logo I'm just lightly cross hatching over it so you've still got the logo in the stripes but it's now not white anymore now I've got the shadow on the shirt Again, we want the shadow on his shirt at the back of his collar and that curves around just deepening the shadow on the jumper now using the soft part of the 4B pencil that's now flattened we can now accentuate these darker lines and they really now stand out and so we've got two here and then that one goes up so now on this side we need to just use a slightly sharper point so I'm just tipping the pencil up and twisting it round to have a slightly sharper point on this side and we can just track those lines in now I'm just putting a wiggly line around the top of the collar again just gives a little bit of definition mm, that's the dark that's a darker one So now this one here, just a little bit too dark. So lifting that off a bit with the putty rubber. Now again, we've got the highlights down the collar. Because of all the work that we did on the shirt that's fuzzed over so we can lighten up the bits where the shirt joins and then right on the front here got a little triangle of light now again we can come in using the 2b pencil and just darken down the shadow of the collar on the right hand side now that's looking really lovely again now I'm just defining the lines again and then we've got a little bit of the pattern weave in those I'm using the 2B 
to create those yellowy mustard lines just indicating them bringing them in rather quickly so I'm really pressing on for that dark line there a little bit of a mustard line and then really pressing on and you can work on top of a 4B with a 2B and it also pushes the 4B around a little bit and you can press on and get that darker effect again it's just building up layers of tone I'll tell you what that that's absolutely lovely so here now we want this darker up the corner this is now I would say this is final details this is this is nice fiddling time which is really really good so again I'm going to sharpen the 2B pencil this is this is literally now just having a bit of fun faffing around and we can again I'm using the 2B pencil but because it's on top of the 4B you're actually pushing the 4B around so here now we can indicate his eyelashes that are coming down we can actually delineate a little bit more that crease above the upper eye and then there's some more hairs here that are coming down and you can do as many or as little as you want but the 2B now I can increase the darkness going up into his tear duct on the lower eyelid and even the iris curving round and that shadow there's a little kind of V there right in the corner Now I've not used the blending stump at all on this drawing and that's just because it's worked without having to use it you don't have to use the same equipment all the time it just shows that you can develop your skills say the shadow on the edge of his nose right in this corner so again the shadow in the corner of the left eye just build that up again I'm resting my left hand on top of my right hand just increasing that shadow coming off the corner of his eye now same thing again you can just use the 2B and darken down inside his left eye his pupil the iris And then we can really indicate his eyelashes coming off. That crease right in the corner, we just darken right in that corner a little bit. Again, this is this is literally nice final details and it's up to you when you want to call it a day again coming underneath the nose underneath the left nostril and I'm just looking at the reference and I'm just adding a little bit of tone at a time 
And you can keep doing this for hours and hours and hours. That tone coming down side of his nose. I say I'm looking round and just making sure I've not missed any bits. So now a little bit of shadow on that neck. This is this is literally just faffing around to be content. The shadow caused by the collar. So now I'm using the 2B pencil. I would use a 2H for this. I'm just increasing this little bit of tone on this cheek down to his chin and his jawline. <sighs> and this really is just, just faffing. Uh, but it's nice faffing. And while we've got the time to experiment and learn, this is the whole point of it. So now, doing that and coming around the lips, I need to put the full highlight on there, top of that lip, and underneath. And then we've got a little bit of a highlight coming down the upper lip. And a little bit of lighter tone there coming down from that cheek. Reflected highlight underneath the nose. So now, <clears throat> just get my brush, and again, those ones, we can just soften those down. I'm now literally just using the paintbrush to just push. Again, I'm squinting so I can see where I want to soften these transitions a little bit. Again, in the eye, underneath, coming down the side of the cheek. Now, what I did here, just brushing that off a little bit, I'm now going to finish just with the brush. And that is V completed. I'm really happy with that. I hope you've had a really good time doing this drawing. We've, again, had lots of challenges, the Chanel earring, again, but just using the, the check pattern on the shirt, that's like the grid that actually let us set out all of V's face. I hope you've had a really good time doing this drawing. I've had an absolute blast. Please do like and subscribe, share this like crazy. The time lapse will be online as well, so you'll see this full lesson in about three minutes. So do check out the time lapses and share those. And I'll see you in the next drawing lesson. Take care. Ted R.